I'm going to make it very clear. I do not work for FiPro. Okay? Logan does. The boss works. I work for Henson Associates. So everything I'm showing you, I'm just the developer. Even though I've worked real close with Logan, Chris, and my, my father, I am not FilePro, I'm Henshin & Associates. So everything I show you is what Henshin & Associates has done through what FilePro has allowed me. Henshin & Associates has over 180 courts in the state of Ohio. It's over 180 different users, or um, uh, clients, okay? So therefore, we develop court software. We have used the FilePro uh, product for over 30 years, and we have taken our courts clear to paperless. And what I mean by paperless, I mean our, some of our courts don't no longer hold paper files. So what I'm gonna show you is some of the things you can do with your file pro application, because I did it, okay? I've got a great set of team, which makes me look good, because I didn't do right all this stuff. I actually got web developers who've actually altered some of the files that are, are, are Chris is gonna show you with the uh, CSS, so therefore we're able to manipulate uh, stuff. We're able to uh, actually pop up CGI's, uh, also um, PHP. Some of this stuff is written, but you can actually just write it in FilePro uh, CF or CGI's. Okay. Um, at this point in time, I'm going to show you <coughs> graphical, character, and web-based. When the users get there, they can pick whatever they want to. Okay? It's the same program. We didn't do, once you're at the graphical point, when it goes to the web base, 90% of it just transfers. You don't have to do anything. And what I'm going to show you is we're going to add a right frame and a bottom panel, which is what we did to our application, to actually expand it out of the 80 by 25. Okay? So, here's my character menu. Okay? Everybody seen it. Graphical is going to look 100% identical, okay, same menu. I'm not going to bore you with court language. As I go through here, I'm going to come down to the rest rest of our language. So because it, uh -huh. Did you have to do anything? To no, that just transferred. There was no change whatsoever to get these you menus. Just spell it, the only thing you did was you replaced the default icons for the stuff that's popping up on the left. Which are that's correct. Three little files under the hood. Okay. Correct. That's all I've done. All I've done is different icons. That's it. So the end user can pick whatever icons they want to. Here's what Henshin Associates has done. Chris showed you the different themes you can do. All I've done is put them themes in HTML pages. Therefore, you can have different colors. Okay? It's the same thing Chris did. He could have changed his colors. He's going to show you how to change the color. But we had problems over the years with uh, GI users. They like green on green on green and wonder why they didn't have any data. Well, because it's all green. So therefore, we got tired of them phone calls, so we put 26 different themes on the landing page. That's all we've done. There's nothing <coughs> special going on here. Where's the carnival one? <laughs> we can do all kinds of stuff with them. And again, this is what why our web department was able to do. But this, this is just a simple <coughs> PHP or uh, CGI file. It's nothing big. All it is is a link behind the scenes, nothing special, anybody can do it, or you can just put a shortcut on the desktop and do it the way anybody else. Uh, so I'm going to just use this color. Here's your login, which was similar to what Chris was doing. I'm going to log into file pro. This wasn't written by your HTML. No, no. This is the launch page. The launch page just had themes, and he then went and pointed to the URL for that theme. Okay. I'm running in app mode. Therefore, I didn't want people hitting the back button, or, or, or. So this is basically just uh, Google running in app mode. So therefore, they don't have the URL and all that showing up because somebody's going to hit the back button. I've been doing this for 30 years. We know what them clients are going to do. So therefore, I got rid of it. So it's basically just running in app mode. Yes, sir. Google running in app mode. That's what it's in. It's, it's under control at F11, but you can pass it variables when you when he sets it up. In Chrome? In Chrome, right. Is Chrome. Okay. This is Google Chrome. He's We're running. Actually running it after. You can, um, and so therefore, he's just got it in a mode that it's, it suppresses all the buttons. Got it. It's a flag when you're launching it? Right. Okay. 
Okay, I'm just going to go to my menu. Same menu. Again, I made no changes. But this is a browser. This, this is, is now browser. I'm running in browser. Yes. I made no changes to my menu. It's the same menu. You go halfway down, you know, right and left. That's all it's done. So I made no changes to this menu to do it. It just automatically transfers over. Can you jump back to one of the other two? Yes, sir. Same menu choices. I did nothing. So That's just you're part of it. trying to teach the user you don't want to use the back arrow keys. You want to navigate by picking something on the menu. You that's correct. That, no, I don't want them using. That's why I went to app mode because once you start clicking stuff, they're going to think, oh, it's a regular browser page and go search the internet. You're going to lose the connection because, of Can course, I'm left. Can you see if any of us appear in here? <laughs> <laughs> How many times? You're in Ohio. You <laughs> Actuality, this is my demo machine, so no, you don't appear in here. Unless your name's John Smith, he's in here all the time. Okay, so here's my menu. What I'm going to do is now start getting involved with some of the changes we did. I'm going to use what I, we call quick access, okay? What this is, I'm actually jumping into a file using a minus X head, automatically jumping into add mode. I mean, basically, add mode with dummy fields. I don't allow anybody to save anything here, it's just the launching page. Well, what I've done is allowed it to be menuous, okay? I can type in the name. We got several different files that uh, names go into in the court system. When doing that, what I can do is jump into a traffic file, a criminal file, without <coughs> it appearing to go in and out of files back and forth. That's all I've done here. Nothing really special. So, over here, these are uh, virtual keys, okay, where I can actually launch the, basically a D clerk or an R clerk session into another file and add a record. That's all that did. So again, a minus X, minus XA. I'm now in add mode. I can actually add a record, just like you would if you went off the menu and hit number three, okay? This allows me to move back and forth and doesn't appear that I'm going in and out of menus. And then the, these are just other files we use. Up across the, the top are buttons. Here's, again, you right. We talked about the right panel and buttons. <coughs> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up a person. John Smith is in my system all over, okay? This is like looking up invoices or anything about an individual. I typed in his name. This is just a purely uh, a browse lookup sitting in the file. I typed in a name, just looked up into a general index that has all the names. Nothing special here. I'm going to pick it. Yes, sir. How, how did you alternate between the uh, gray and the white backgrounds? In Automatically, the just part of file, pro part of the... It's, you can you change to the CSS file. CSS file, which does the color. This is a browse. This is a browse, a regular browse. However, that's not the default behavior that is altered. <laughs> But you have the capability of touching those CSS files. Okay. It, 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 tell me how it alternates, but we can deal with it. So without any changes, it would all be white with the one. It line would be that's white with out. that bar, the red bar, the red well, with the whatever color bar you would. Okay. okay. Now I pick a person. Now I'm going to start using this right panel. Okay. Over in the right panel, what I have done is taken all this guy's records and associated them and pop, popped it up. So therefore, what you're going to do in my uh, situation is all the different violations they have. It could be all their uh, real estate, all their violations, anything you're dealing with about that one individual. That's all the records. So They're separate records in File Pro, but I'm showing you by just looking at this record. This is a header detail, there's a header and then the details on the right. This information over here is just the panel. I can put whatever I want in the panel. What I'm using this panel for, which is a, basically a web page, it's an iframe that's popped up. I'm lo basically looking up different records that's associated with this individual. Then down below is all his different hearings. It could be the next time he's supposed to come and see you, any type of event, it could be money, you name it. Down below, this is a docket, I'll come down. It's basically notes about this individual actually about this particular instance. So therefore, I can come over here, and again, this depends on what you want to do with it. I can come here and click on this record, and as you can tell, I changed the case number. Down here, 
I've changed the information because it's linked to this record every time I hit that link. I basically pulled up another record through that. They're called virtual keys. Chris will explain that. It's a new feature of 6.0 about virtual keys where actually you're allowed to do these functionalities work, which was never ever able to until we got into 6.0. Okay, over here, I also can jump into a file. Okay, all I've done is automatically jumped over to the record. This is a total different file. I went into our traffic case file, pulled up the record, popped up some screens. None of this means much to you, but I pulled up this record. So I left the add mode, took that number, looked it up through an index, popped it up, and put you on that screen. So again, the panels are still here. They've changed, but they're still here. Yes, sir. I just was going to, if, if people didn't catch this, the only part of that screen that's the normal file pro screen is the part that looks like a file pro screen. You got the it. The stuff on the right is actually a web page, iframe. It's a portion of it, you've spun up HTML mm -hmm. and put it next to the main screen. The same thing with the thing at the bottom. That's not a browse list. Yep. That's an HTML list. Yep. But the, the new thing is we used to do that all the time, spin up HTML, but you couldn't click on anything in it and have it talk back to the core program again. Mm -hmm. That's what's new, that I can click on the frame and have it go redirect file pro on the core program back to somewhere different. You're 100% correct. And right there's my main screen. There's my main screen, which is the same portion in the web browser, other than I'm probably on a different record. This is the main screen. That's the main screen. All I've done is added them two panels around it. So how that's the change you made? That's what we had to program. That's additional. Otherwise, right out of the box, I did nothing to the main section. That you would get everything except the two. Do two panels. So and is this, is this program in a file for processing table? This is all With file HTML command. Correct. Yep. We use the JS file <laughs> command and then make the HTML on the fly. Okay. And then say trigger it. When I was talking about those in wet bed right. windows and we have 20 of them, that's what that bottom one is that he's got for the docket. Right. And then the one over to the to the um, right as you look, that's called an, a west. And you can open up a West, and you can t t t define how many pixel sizes that you want that to expand by. So if you want that to be really big or really sm or small, you get the choice to say how many pixels that that HTML that you're going to give that URL is allowed to, to be. So you can expand that depending on your monitors that you're going to be dealing with. So to be effective in using this FT web, we, we do need to dig in and learn HTML. Very basic HTML. I bet. If you don't well, know, that is a negative because that's how most people would do this. You know, yeah, you have to. I, you do, but there. If you were to look at that, well, he's got a lot of styles because he wants it really pretty. But if you wanted to just open, I mean, to do the themes, like he was like, well, how do you get the alternating colors and all that? Our web guys go through there and they they chewed up the whole CSS files, records, and all that other stuff to do that. But. Under normal circumstances, if you just want something over to the left, because I originally gave the prototype for them and said, here's what you could do, and then we let the web guys make it look all pretty. <laughs> the, um, you can expand that and just write some simple HTML and it looks good even just yeah. as so basic. How do those CSS files handle uh, like mobile tablet? Yeah. The, as far as... As far as... Uh, as long as it's this displayed. This is my pain, pain grade, but uh, I know not to be dangerous. Like I know CSS can be written to, to handle varying with you know, screens. Correct. We do that. We don't. We don't do the. That's it. Yeah, we don't do that at this moment. Okay. Okay. No response the time on this yet? Not at this moment. It's designed for a normal PC size screen at the moment. Can I make a suggestion? We don't want a whole lot of questions here. What we want to do is show you what the system is capable of doing because we do have people going to leave. Write down your com questions and we'll come back for them because I don't want to get caught up on one simple little part of it and miss the whole general concept. So let's keep him flowing because I think with a lot of interruptions he loses his trend and so forth. And I don't want, I want it to flow like he's normally doing in a demo. That's all right. 
you know, just want to ask, what does okay. the character version of that look like if you go there? Excuse me? What does the character version of that look that like if you go character? there? Character? I'll show you character. Just a graphic screen. It wouldn't have those. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, I'll pull up the same record. I just did graphical. Mm -hmm. Right there. Oops. The other stuff doesn't exist there. Yeah. Right. That's the and, 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 and again, to get me from character to even graphical or web, you do have to add stuff because I need my drop downs or it's not going to work. So you've got to, once your program's in graphical, the browser's nothing, but you've got to get to graphical. You've got to put your hooks, you've got to put your buttons in there. So therefore, this starts changing. Okay? But it doesn't affect you if you go back to the character. You still no, it still run. runs. Right. Because what you do, what you do in as far as commands, you've got commands where it's uh, GUI or not GUI, and then you also got web. So therefore, you can actually do because you got certain different commands. Once you get into web, on certain things to pop them up. Well, just to pop up the right panel. Well, I can only do that in the browser. So therefore, I'm going to tell it only execute these in the browser mode. Okay. There is another panel that we at Henshin Associates doesn't use yet. That is the top. Correct. There is a frame up there. Yeah. There's a north region and. If you didn't link the standard file pro buttons, for example, you could even program a new bar of buttons that would be colored and all that, and then trigger those and have totally no buttons that file pro did and make your own. Okay, so you got your buttons loosely across the top, which you're used to in uh, graphical. They're at the bottom. They're the same ones. Other than, of course, I've made them look pretty. So therefore, this gives you that Windows look. Because I went outside, I replaced these buttons, which are typical buttons, with icons. Okay, Chris will cover how you get them to look like this, how he got them. They go into a certain location, I take all these icons and I basically map what the icon's going to look like. Okay, so I'm in this record, I'm going to exit out of the record. Okay, now I'm back to where I started. Okay, now let's work with this screen here. Okay. <coughs> Other things, because I'm just in a web page, I can click here and display additional information. Anytime I use my bottom panel, my right panel, I do not lock that record. Tim was talking about you hit an eye and he was locking his record. I'm doing the same thing. This docket down here is an E key generally within my character or graphical. With this here, anything I do within this panel, I can scroll up and down. I can look at images. It has no bearing in locking the record. Okay? I can actually be even go back over to the case file. Let me close this. Go back over to the case file. Oops, sorry. And I can be in update mode and still use this panel over here has no bearing because it's a, actually an iframe. It's outside a file program to a point. Okay? So let me just understand, when you, when you click on, on the, the panel on the right, yep. it's sending out a request back to file program to change the screen. You got it. So somewhere you've got a request linked to that hyperlink. Got it. There's, there's a new virtual field. And what that allows you to do is, you can't use it in anything else but web. And, and yeah, so what it allows you to do is you pass pass a, a that field into there, and it just kind of waits there. And it doesn't matter if you're an upgrade or not, and it'll just kind of send it as a like an an event, and it just waits for that key. And then when you can act on it as soon as it's clicked, so it doesn't matter if you're an update or not. You send it a key, and that and then what he does is he'll like pass it a string, and each one of those links that you see have a prefix that says this is the routine I'm going to run and here's the parameters I'm going to send it and then it, that allows him to go wherever he wants. Okay. And that's written in file pro? Yeah. Oh, all that. Yeah. I'll show you the okay. virtual fields in a, in a while. Okay. okay. Click on other buttons. Show other screens. These are basically the screens that I have within our system. I'm just putting them in an HTML page. Okay. So therefore you can do anything with this, as you would a web page, this shows the amount of EOs, the disposition of the cases, which is all boring to you guys because you have no idea about most court system. Now, we also have down here, these are like notes, okay? 
what we do, we'll call them docket entries in a court system. These are all the proceedings, everything that's happened to that record. So that's no more than you taking a note on anything you're keeping track of. If somebody calls in, you can make a note on a record. So it's basically our notes. Oh, but we, what we have done at Hedge and Associates is also attach image is to these notes. So therefore, I show an icon next to all records that have an image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button right here and I'm going to actually pop up the image. So therefore, again, I sent that command right back to FilePro, popped up that screen. Okay? Any questions? Is that image in the browser? Is it in FilePro or are you opening up something on the client? Yes. It, it's located on the server and then he's, he's launching it. Um, a, a sequence there to tell it to pop up. I'm telling exactly where it's located and telling it to pop it up. So, so, but, but, but you're launching a program on the client? Like browser is it's, a, it's, a bro it's a browser thing. He's just saying open a new window and put it in. Yeah, the image is not in File Pro, correct? Just the name. No. No, the, the name. no but it's just setting on a that file. Image yeah. is sitting right here and I'm saying, Go pop that up. Right. Okay. It says Deja View Viewer. Yeah. Or Correct. Is that a plugin that, that he? We use some other kind of a thing, but that could just as easily be a PDF and then is pop that, up a new window. Is that inside the same frame though as the original thing, or is it another window? No, that's a new window. So, so you're able to launch on the client another browser window. Yes, we can open new windows. However, what he's doing is outside of what file pro is that he showed you but we file pro has ways to do it but just because of the nature of the way we did gi in the times past we we made for Here's pension a, associates another way to do things Here's a PDF. so we used to use deja vu which was a different format this is pdf okay which is now running on the client yeah well yeah it, it, he's going to have, it would be built in. The reason you're seeing on the client, we have a third, we, we developed another product that ties in for our own internal use at Engine and Associates. It's, so it's being launched. Because there's, essentially it's watching for a, a, a string of commands and then it launches it, is what he's doing. But we could as quickly have wrote it another way and had FilePro do it. FilePro could have launched it. As well. I just didn't switch you everything didn't. to strictly FilePro. Which, again, disclaimer, Engine Associates writes their own third-party software, and I, will sh I may show you one or two of them. Not to mention, we do e-filing, we do record search. It's all actually built by our web guys. But again, we take data from FilePro, post it out, out to the web. We also take information off the web and download it to FilePro. We actually, like I told you, went, took our courts totally paperless, which means we're accepting documents from attorneys and it's going into the court package. It's actually populating, creating uh, case records. I just basically take the uh, ASCII dump and upload it into FilePro and populate an entire case file and do whatever other functionality I want to. <coughs> okay? Another thing you can get into is everybody's probably familiar with accounting. This was an accounting file. You could print your invoices into PDFs, <laughs> store them like he did, and then when you come to that particular uh, individual you can pop up all the invoices that that person had uh, payments or anything like that by just using the PDFs or scanning in a document I got an example of that to show okay um, we talked about the right frames we talked about the bottom panel we've already talked about the icons up at the top again uh, other virtual keys which you normally can't do this can, this can only be done through the uh, browser version, I can uh, I clicked over here and went to the case file. I can also click over here and go to the case file. Okay, I can actually tell FilePro to automatically print a form. I can actually go here and tell it to print a form. It'll automatically go over there. Get rid of this message. It pops up that form. All I've done is told FilePro to go over there. Once I got there, hit F for form. I told it to push the F key and print the form. So therefore, it's supposed to speed it up, and then when they're done printing the form, it can actually exit them cor correctly back. All I've done is take shortcuts. That's all <coughs> these items are across the top here, okay? So therefore, you can print forms. I can fl uh, flip over, again, go back up to my browse and switch to cases. It's just a simple file pro commands. But again, 
uh, the real change that make, which makes the browser look a whole lot nicer is that right and bottom panel plus the icons. It really has actually took it to the next level. We're actually this year going to be gaining several ports in the state of Ohio because we switched over to the browser base. I'm not so sure we would have got these new clients without going to the browser base because everybody says, oh, it's character looking, it looks like the 80s, the 90s. It no longer does because now I've totally taken it out of the 80 by 25. No, the, 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 looking at this, the question wouldn't even arise. Right. right. You can't Nobody tell. Really you can't really tell this is fine. Well, nobody would say, why is this out of date? You got it. Looks, it looks like it should look. Correct. You also said lawyers upload documents. So yeah. through here, you have a way to say that I want to upload a document, just like drag and drop uh, from yes. the downloads a PDF. Again, we wrote that in the web, and they drag and drop the documents and upload to the court. You want, and we, we got this major process we do, and we've built uh, over the course of the last ten years. But again, the browser is brand new. What you're seeing here is our first revision of the browser. We wanted to get it out there and prove it worked. This took us less than six months to do what we're doing here. And we rewrote stuff for us because we wanted to streamline how Hench and Associates did it. Had nothing to do with the browser, which is again why it took a little longer than what it should have, because we wanted to make it simpler. So therefore, when we moved from client to client to client, it would be streamlined, okay? The icons on the right, is that also a little, is that an HTML overlay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a, an iframe. Right? It's, it's just an embedded. Like you had the pictures up. Yeah, when I had the pictures, by default, the CSS style is clear. So therefore, if you put an image there, you'll get the clear background. And that's essentially what you're seeing there. Because this is what the screen really looks like in graphical. Uh, now what? And this you, is graphical. And you, and you could display the HTML there but you're with the icons, but you're not. Well, no, you no, can't. You can do the virtual. You're only limited yeah. to one embedded. You could put that embedded, and then you'd have to have an input field. That's the only way to pass in the file pro from an HTML at the moment, or in, in, uh, well, in, in the Well, you should paint it there, but the clicks wouldn't do anything. Yeah, unless you have an input field, you could make that click. There, there's a, a href link that you can associate even to GI client in order to take and click it, and it would receive the key. Okay, let me go back to my traffic base that's more recent. So therefore, we, I'm going to go. There's not enough information on this. Well, I don't know about this. Okay. I'm going to go to this case. The other thing is, and again, just like Chris said before, even though I'm using a third-party program to launch this, you can launch pictures or anything. So I'm going to check out a photo. This is a photo of this individual, which is linked to that case. Again, you can launch anything. This can be FilePro. I'm using a third-party program, but this could be done completely through FilePro. I can actually upload a file to, or a photo. Let me make sure which keystroke. I can replace the photo that's there. Because the photo would be by the HTML. It's in a location on the server, so therefore his HTML, when he calls it, he tells it to drop in that location. Okay. Now, speaking of that though, think we do something a little bit different. When we drop a file, we drop it to a read-write area, right. but then when we take and finally save it, we have file pro move it to a read-only area. So therefore, if that image would be, you know, a PC would end up getting a crypto virus or something, it can't can't tap our um, images, and then we don't have to worry about them. We've had uh, one court not that long ago that the the county got hit with the crypto, and we were the only site that was up within 24 hours. The other ones were over three days. So it is helpful doing that. Okay, here's what my web guy did. I want to upload a file. I'm going to just click right here. And if it was in the correct directory, I'd be able to find it real quick. Let me go back to my desktop. I am on my desktop. What's in here? Photo. So I can replace this photo. Upload it. Now when I view the photo, was successful of uploaded. Now when I view the photo, I switched it. That did not have to be external. It could have been internal too, where does the drop was. That's my hardware department. 
again and forward. Okay, so I can upload documents that way. I can upload photos that way, sound bites, whatever. We do all kinds of uploads, but again, all I did is pop that screen up, dragged and dropped and pulled it over, then wrote it and attached it to this record automatically by knowing its name. Okay? Let's let's print up let's do the PDF. Chris talked earlier about the PDF. I'm gonna print me a PDF. Here's my forms. I'm gonna just pick any these are file pro forms. I'm gonna just pick any file pro form I want. I'm gonna go with the simple one. I'm not going to answer all these questions. I didn't know there were so many questions. Hey, what it's going to do, at least I hope yeah, so. I have a, question. a good question. Can you have the picture show up somewhere else when you bring it down, or does it have to be on another page? You know, another Actually, I'll you can embed it, folks. We can embed you, it. you can embed it. You can put it in that left window right. if you want it open and make it, if it's small enough. Yeah. And you could um, open it in a new window. Wherever you want. A tab, you know, exactly. or whatever you want. Uh, I was supposed to uh, actually take my... You didn't answer any questions. I know. It should have just automatically... <laughs> it should have popped up another question. Let me try that again. I'm probably pointing the wrong printer. <laughs> this, what it's supposed to do is pop that uh, PDF up and ask me if I want to save it and then make a note and actually save it to it. But I don't know. I Today's not the day. I have an <laughs> example of that, too. Okay. So therefore, by doing this, by taking that photo, because Chris said you can name it, I can actually make an entry, automatically save the image, and I can go paperless. This is all using FirePro. It has nothing to do with anything Hench and Associates has done. Uh, exactly what we've done. Our paperless, we get. We use the third-party program because we timestamp it. We 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 do all kinds of stuff with it. When we go paperless, we move documents around the office. But again, that's Hench and Associates. What could, if it would have worked, which would have been dem demonstrated here, is actually popping up that PDF, and then they asked me if you want to save it, would have made a docket entry, and then the photo would have been as associated to. So anybody here can make your total system paperless by actually using PDFs, by popping them up, giving it a name, it saves it in a temporary location, and then ask the question and move it down the tree associating to that record. So anybody can do it. What I'm trying to show you is what you can do. It's not what we did. It's what you all can do. Okay? I'm going to show you another, uh, the, our third party program also <coughs> what we've been able to do. This is using the do key which was mentioned. I'm actually replacing the uh, printing of the forms with uh, a feature. I'm going to show you a third party program we wrote that actually will take the data out of the database, merge it with Word, WordPerfect or any database and actually turn around and populate it. So I'm going to pick one of these forms here, the best <coughs> form. This one is set for paperless so I got to choose somebody. I'll, I'll send it to the judge. And what I want you to do is think what you can do for your client. I can actually send a message. What this third party program is doing is popping it up. I took the data out of FilePro, so therefore that's where this uh, case number came, where this name came from. I'm able to attach a photo. Dream. Don't think what I did, think what you can yeah, do. When you said third party program. We wrote this program to actually merge between FilePro and Word, pop it up, I can actually turn this form into an image. I can do all kinds of stuff. We wrote that piece of this. Even though I'm using FilePro, right. all that was written outside of FilePro. How about merging with like uh, Outlook? You want to send an email? Oh, we, we, can, we send emails. Actually, GI Client has it built in to be able to. How about the web as yeah. well? The, as long as you can open up in a new window and tell it <laughs> what to do. But, what 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 what, 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 what mail client? The mail client is the hard part. You don't know what they have. Yeah, but you're not gonna. You don't know if the client you see is Outlook on it, or it could be a Mac. It could be Gmail. It could be Gmail. Because you're the, the whole point is it's in a browser. So I'm assuming PC with uh, PC with uh, the, 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 the Outlook. That's what most of my 
Back to being able to launch one that, that would be back to yeah to allowing the application to be launched and telling it exactly what it does like we do in GI um, message in GI on. message sends for the run command. There, there's been talk about doing stuff like that, but we run into the whole issue of security and what can we launch without taking and making something vulnerable. That's correct. Henson Associates with these products have weighed the risk versus the security. There are risks on what I just showed you. We can, and again, we can actually text out of here. We can batch text. We've been able to do it again. That's because we wrote these third-party programs. But again, there are risks with, with what, I, what I have done with our total paperless court. But yet, we've also considered them risk in what I'm actually demonstrating. Does the public access through this? Or no, that's why. It's right. interior. It's not out on the web. It's interior. What we show out on the web is actually behind a firewall, and it's just uh, basically web pages. So again, I'm willing to take that risk. As you can tell, my social security is not encrypted either. Again, we've uh, this is only in-house for courts, so therefore we don't, without a VPN connection, the court doesn't leave outside their four walls. Okay? Do you so, sell, mm -hmm. do you sell those? We can look at it. We can look at the possibilities. Okay, so everybody understands what I, we at Henshin Associates have done with this. Again, your main section automatically works once it's GI. Again, I got all these drop downs, as you can tell. If you look at all the drop downs, they, they potentially have special characters, a period behind it, or whatever. Either I'm looking at a full name, an abbreviated version. So therefore, drop downs can actually mean different things. If you notice at the end of the line, you see a lot of periods, okay? A lot of them are what we consider add view or deletes, okay? The other ones looks at other information, insurance period. I looked at the whole word. That's how we're actually building our screen scraping to get my drop downs. And again, these drop downs are the same ones we're using in our graphical. And they just came right across, okay? Yes, sir. Does that protect the time in the future, version 7, 8, 9, whatever, somewhere down the line where the character-based part of the equation goes away, where it just becomes impossible to move forward and try to maintain that as part of the offering? I mean, and I'm talking 10 years down the road, you know? At this point, we haven't considered, I don't think, doing away with it because there's a lot of people that still want it. Yeah. But what they've done is they've added switches and things. If web, then do yeah, this. No. If not web, then you see yeah. you and, the code where. Not and at this present time, when you're programming it, you still better to program on the on the character side of the things because we some of them we haven't enabled yet on the developer side of the things to be totally with the web. We have to look at all those because it, in order to make I was talking the ten scoring years, things. Ten years down the road. Well, I think the main thing is you're looking at File Pro, which you all have been familiar with. You know how to do defined files and screens and so forth. You don't have to show them, but you need still a database, and the engine of File Pro is all there for the rapid researching, indexing, and all that stuff. To, re to redo that, I would see no purpose in, in that, because you need a core to work with, and that core then you put a different face on well, just it, like and that's you what you're doing here. a different here. face to the end users here, down the road you may want to give a different face to new developers. You know, sure. somebody is coming yep. out of we, school. We are looking at alternate different things, but and are a little more excited a lot, about a lot, of, a lot of the problem is, is time. Yeah, of course. And, time and yeah. And if we can find some more programmers, we'd be happy, but we, that those are kind of rare right now to find good ones. And nobody gets or, uh, loaded. Nobody gets loaded. We have a lot of high volume data entry customers, and they don't want their employees to come out. Here, here. Yeah, don't, don't ever get rid of it. No, no, it's not in the plans. But there's plans, maybe. There, there's been talk, and we've been thinking about how could we do some stuff. I know you guys have all like, let's get out of the 25 by 80. But it's almost embedded into the very nature of file prone. It's very difficult without almost doing a rewrite in some of those interfaces. So, yeah, we'd like to do some stuff, but we have to count the cost. 
question I had a minute ago. Uh -huh. With the GI, you can alter the color. You can say white on, on this color is going to be substituted for something. Correct. Does that, that, happens. Does that honor and apply yeah. here? He, he, we at Henshin Associates decided to go plain. I can show you, you know, all 16 colors, foreground, background, are honored in GI by default. Well, the reason I ask is there's a trick that we've successfully done. If you don't like seeing the question marks in front of the yes-no fields or the semicolons, was to make them mustard on green in the screen that's at definitions and then say that mustard on green is blue on blue. Uh, essentially, <laughs> That's yeah. great. makes it disappear. Yeah. So not in character mode. It still yeah. it shows up as mustard on green in character mode. But it was a way to have certain triggers and things that we wanted in character mode and not have. Yep. So that would still apply to the web. Um, it's a you wanted great to. idea. <laughs> There's not a visible choice in the style sheets. Might get well. No, they're just the background though, aren't they? Is it is the style sheet just changing the background color? What? Yeah, the spell sheet has a total control over all that, and I, I'm not going to, I can't go into detail because it's going to bore the people who don't know nothing about HTML on it, but the style sheet, you can change the colors. I will show where you go into the style sheet in order to change those icons on the top because those are pretty straightforward, but yeah, okay. you, there's a lot in there. I'm yes, assuming, uh, unless maybe I'm wrong, the cursor path doesn't apply in yeah. HTML. Oh yeah, yeah, it does. We it does. honor that. It's and, and like again, one of the rare ones that what, you can. What most people don't realize when in going into graphical or browser based, all your keystrokes are pretty much the same. There are two that have to change. It's Control C for deleting out. It's Escape once versus Escape Escape. Except in Windows, it was always that way. So therefore, if I hit U for update, it updates. And then I can still use my tab. I can hit Return. But the advantage is in a the graphical or web, I can click to certain places. And, and depending upon an environment variable, it will execute all the when entering field leaving from where you were to where you went, yep. or not, if you set a certain you, variable. Yeah, you could set it that it doesn't honor the tabs and the cursor path. They'll just jump there. But for ourselves, we want it to honor everything because certain events have to happen. Mm -hmm. so that's down, <coughs> that, that's just coming from file goes uh, browse lookup, right? No, it's not a browse lookup. It's actually a drop down. They're actually text <laughs> files that are built, which Chris showed briefly earlier. Remember the DD0 text DD file? They said file. Oh, this whole yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then here's the text. That's what those are. Is that dynamic? Have six browsers? Yes, I do. So here's, here's this drop down, OK? Actuality, and it even tells me up here there's browse lookups. So that's a, that's a drop down. Let me get out of there so it drops it. Okay, or I can hit the F6 key. Is that dynamic? Well, is that a DD01 or is that no, a browser? No, that's actually, that's actually browser. Browser. That's the difference. F6. Okay. It's the F6. So can you go back to the screen? Mm -hmm. That's browse lookup. And yep. that's that. So the attorney field has the same arrow that the DD0 style drop down does because this was a wish list thing. Um, not that this, I don't use the DD0 thing because I didn't that, have to maintain it. That drop down is only there because of the DD0. Well, but this one is an F6. No, he no, has, no, he's doing both. Bold. It has one. He has a browse also yeah, in, the browse in the drop down. <laughs> okay. But wow. What the point is, if you have a browse on a bunch of your stuff already anyway in text, yeah. it will work the same way. Here. As text. As okay. text. Because it used to be that there was no, the F6 would work, but there was no indicator to tell you that you could hit the browser. That was the new thing that you were that talking about. Thing thing yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I think that I'd have to go, I'd have to put it, enable it and all that to see what it looks like. I, I'm thinking you're not even going to see it in the web. It's never been in the web. You might have said it wasn't in the web yet. Can you go back to the character screen? Character? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So that violation info. A violation information's up here. That's the F6. You did F6. Well, you were, okay. That's not F6. Well, that's because of the you violation. I was in the yeah. This yeah. F6 is still the same. 
but I don't have a drop down because of course it's a character. Yeah. Now you notice one thing about these drop downs too. It's just because it's not in the drop down list does not mean that you can't put that data in there. So in other words, <laughs> it's not limited to what's in a drop down. So for example, his city field that's on that screen it says Bowling Green, Ohio. If he has something that's not even in that field, it will it will um, act on it. And it, but it, it kind of like creates a dummy thing in the middle in order to take and put that in. Can you stop that? Yeah, you do a wind leaving field with a look up here. Oh, exactly. Field. Yep. Right. When, when you have a wind entering field, mm -hmm. uh, like display, when I was, when I would do a wind entering field with a browse lookup, I'd always say at the bottom, press F6 for a browse lookup. Yeah. Correct. And now, so that's and that button at the top. Well, right there, I switched that. that show at the bottom anymore? No, it's up there. I want, you see that first field I have highlighted? It's not the same field, but it automatically went up there and when I hit return. Yeah, it just went up there because there's a browse, there's a wind, WBL. I told it, I told it to put a button there. Yeah. When there's a browse, look well, up. When button. I'm in there, I told it to put the license scan, which is my field. I told it to well, put what, it there. What, and then what when if I, I have in my, in my code, I have at the bottom, I have wind entering field, let's say attorney, mm -hmm. show at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. Just a regular show statement, um, show press F6 to browse look up attorneys. If you do it in that manner, it, it, it depends on how you put what it in. Show here? If, you, if you say press F6, and literally P-R-E-S-S, yes. and I mean, it don't press space dash R, space F6. Yeah, yeah if you're using the dash R, that's not a button K, defined. K a button defined goes backslash curly bracket and the contents of that text for that button, colon, and then the field that you want pushed. So, so right there. So like here is F8 for scan for license. This here is a backslash curly bracket and then the F, or the whatever the F8 is. And then the cur close curly bracket, that puts that in reverse and that will become a button on both. However, when it comes to the web, because of those buttons going to the top, that text stays behind and only F8 will go up there. So you want to encapsulate and make sure that you have a separate So my button. just a regular old show would not? It is a show, but you're gonna have the, to the just, you're gonna have to modify that show in order so it displays properly for your button. But you can do that as he said. You have GUI, not GUI, so that's anything that's not graphical or web. You have uh, GUI one, which is specifically GI client, and you have web, which is also GUI two. Those are alias together. So you can control your processing. Say I want this row of buttons when I'm on the web interface, or this one for the the other interface and so forth. If you start using the regular GI, the first thing we did was went through all our show statements at the bottom you got and, and changed the, the simple, the, back, the backslash R's that we have to the new squiggly thing rule so that when in GI, they would display with, uh, as a button, right. clickable button. And, and with the new search and replace, it's a lot easier that. to find them. I probably have a thousand of them. Easily. Yeah. Well, then, that, thirty years. But it does right. enhance the program a lot by getting oh, yeah. those buttons uh, defined, yeah. and they still look right in character. That came out in the GI version yeah. two, which has been a long time. So ago. these are your character buttons that you're seeing, and then down below here's your graphical buttons. So it's still So E dash docket, that's not good. That's correct. Because bracket right docket colon E, and the E on the end means what's it going to actually send when you click it. That is exactly. correct. Right. And that works also in web. So if you've already done that, yep. Well, it'll just, just boom, done. But they'll move up above. Depending on your theme. The, yes, I remember I showed you three different places for the buttons to depend on the theme. And you have the control to change all but, your themes. To be but if that show center with GUI has anything in it that other than the backslash French bracket blocks, those elements of the show will stay at the bottom. They stay on the bottom. Even if you're moving on the... Yeah. Well, but you would never see him on his because he's covered that area okay. over with an embedded frame. Which, that is a negative to what he did. If you had any air messages or some kind of messages that would go on the bottom. There, you need to move them or else you'll never see them. The failed edit message, things like that. Yep. 
Do you have a document, you know, describing the process? Like, if you have a character-based application, you want to move to the web, here's basically an outline of the steps you go through? Actually, that's a good idea. I, like could, probably, I could probably do something like that. I, I created a PDF to take and document how all the web and interface and all that did had one of my um, staff members review it afterwards. We've got it done. It's going to be a PDF that we're going to include on the website to explain how to all the different features, what commands, how you go, where do you go to change certain functions, like I want to change the colors and whatever. It's all explained in detail, but you know, more than what we could do today. Hey Pat, yes, <coughs> can you make the right frame uh, a different color? I can change, no, not he, based off what I'm He can't. Okay. Because I've based everything off of themes, and of course that theme is being paid, passed through to the my two frames. Okay. But you could have a different you could cascading have. style sheet for that frame you got if you set it up that way. Right. We passed it through because we wanted it all yeah. to blend. But yeah, you could do whatever you wanted to on your style sheets. Yes. Yes, sir. Can you configure it so that if you click in that box without going to update automatically goes into update mode? He wants to be able to click somewhere in the center of this and automatically right. update mode. This. Um it would make everybody very happy, Logan, if you could do that. I don't kind think of so, way because then you got the records to update things. things. Well, I'll, I'll, the if they were to think is that it's a function of the client, right? It's a function of file, right? Well, no, it's a <laughs> the compromise, <laughs> I would say, is instead of put, popping up the message, you must be in update mode. Automatically, but could it say, "All right, I'm going to send you back to file program"? And, if, they want to be and if it wasn't, if you didn't have any fields, you know what that does in ad mode? That happens. I have a new progress bar. <laughs> 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 if you did it honestly. <laughs> Now, maybe. I hear your request, but now how do I cut and paste? That's always been an issue. Somebody, you're asking well, me that. I was trying to give you a generalized <laughs> way to not have it just be update and, and worry about that. Something they, they can look at. No, you're right, because you, how do you click on it? I want to jump from one field to another. If I'm in already in update mode, then clicking it, it's going to take you to whatever field you're on. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, in a typical browser-based program, how would it work? Typically, they'll probably just stick you in update mode when you first went in, which you can do. Yeah. You could push it to say, go in update when they hit this menu item. That's true. Yeah, well, you've got, the, you've got a command to update all records anyway. Yeah. If you hit F4, it'll put you in update, and you hit escape, and you'll go to the next record. You know, and you may be right. Like, I was thinking, like, salesforce.com, if you pull something up, it just puts you on the screen there, and then if you make any change, you have to put the same change. Well, you sort of did that, but you really creatively by doing a stand file where your first search screen is in update mode, but it's on a screen with dummy variables that's not a real file. So that's that's right yeah. there. You're boom, you're right in the update right. mode. Some are just dummy, them are dummy fields. I'm in automatically in the ad mode is what I've done. But on a stand file, on a yeah. temporary file. Yeah. Right. <laughs> It doesn't save anything. I told it to kill the record if they tried to hit the escape. If you wanted to keep a record of every search somebody did, you could keep the record. Yeah, I, I never have to use a menu in this kind of a system either if I wanted to. And that's why it'd be an update mode from the beginning and going. Any other questions? Do you have a browse? Like just the equivalent of the browse? E for browse? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, you can have B. Was that list? That's what that thing with the He 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 changed his style sheet like you said. I wanna know how to do that. <laughs> in GI, even in regular GI. What won't work in regular GI list? Uh, I don't think so. In, in fact GI has built in HTML, but it's kind of an in-house version. It's not like the regular browser. And it doesn't use HTML for the browse screen. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. No, well, it kind of is a hyper, hyper. Anyway, what would you say that the use case differences are between GI and FDR? As far as what? Why, why would I use one over the other? Looks number one. Pardon? This this one is mainly because everybody likes the looks immensely. So and now I have the broken by twenty five. As our web guy said, he goes, now that you've done this to me, the world's my environment. Right. <laughs> and uh, here's Before the problem. He couldn't. The number one limitation that we have found so is our imagination. What can you imagine? What's next? Now that I can actually do HTML, we've just begun to touch what we can do. My web guy's just biting at the bit saying, let me add it. Yes, sir. Um, would you guys just consider like a switch for the you know launching of stuff on the client end or whatever? Maybe just like uh, you know, yeah, dangerous set to on or something and you can we, but maybe you can set like one program or whatever we, so we, you can write we, a program and say only launch this one. We, we are considering it because it, it, it but at the same time we're trying to watch for security and um, it might have to be a, like another app or something like that you would put on your client so that it, it, it would communicate yeah. you know like a daemon that would go between the two and then it would launch it would cause the launch um, but Actually, we have done it in prototype already before, so it's not that it's impossible. It's just well, we want to make sure we're secure. You, you launched Adobe here on the client. It's just a matter of launching something that the user. It, but what you saw in in his demo on that, the way that worked, he it's wrote to a specific. He wrote to a location on the hard drive, and there's a watch thing that's being run. So it's looping through that folder and saying, when is it, what's here? When he finds something in that file, he launches it. That's what you're seeing. You need a universal shim that could be installed on the client. Exactly. We would, we want, if we were to do it, as far as within File Pro, it'd be more of an ad event. That's how we work, you know, for most of the things. It would trigger on demand, not just sitting there now. No offense. Not an untaken. So the PDF links weren't just HTML hrefs? Ahrefs, they weren't just standard. And Mine was not. Not what he did, but when I did you it, can do and it I that way, we've chosen <laughs> Attention Associates because well, what we're able to do with what you see, I can pop up images and stuff. I can do that all in character. Well, you can pop because out because I got that third-party program. And, and, so that's and, why we did. In our imaging program, we also have redacting and everything else built into it. So he needs his client to talk in order to do the redaction and all that other stuff. And it's not web-based at that point as far as the redaction and stuff. So in order to have that control from on a PC level, well, he's you've, that other you've hidden the URL and then also he's hidden the tabs, but you can still launch. A, I, another window, right? And of course, you can actually display PDFs inside, um, yeah, the browser. Inside right. the browser, you can either have it embedded or external, or as a new new. Well, if you do it embedded, you're giving up 80 by 25 space, unless unless, unless you, you put, put it, it in, in one of the frames, frames, or put it in an outside frame, right? Or you, you, even if you wanted to. You could take and make a directory or a thumbnail of all your PDFs over to the side, and then you click it and then launch the drill. The as a pop-up. Yep. And Chris, if you get knocked off this, uh, if you're on a remote, if you're on a remote session, you get knocked off. You get have to log back in again, right? You have to log back in. Okay. Um, but like we said before, that old 2.0 and the 3.0 job or GI server, we had a lot of problems with. Well. Never, never anything clearing out. After the rewrite, we're, we very rarely find anything like that anymore. No corruption, okay, good. It, there's like a rare one incident that I can Whoa. think of that might actually not disconnect it, but okay. it's just beyond our control. Okay. The type of, of a situation that's in. Okay. But it's been a lot more stable. As you can tell, if he was to type through that, you don't see any distortion. It's honoring all that when leaving fields. If he had a wrapping f or a scrollable field on there, you would have been able to type through that. If you want to be able to survive those kind of disconnects, the only good way to do it I know of, we're going to talk about tomorrow, and that's to use terminal services. 
then you can launch the MSTSC client through a web page by there are several ways to launch it, right. but that terminal services connection will reconnect. Then your browser, instead of just running Chrome in app mode, Jason's actually written a custom browser for us so that we can control exactly what they can do. Even the fit, save and print yeah, buttons that are in most browsers give exposure to the local hard drive of the server they're running on. I don't want to allow that, so we've rolled our own browser that we would we would launch. We can do that if it's on the same server more right. readily. I don't have to worry about whether the client has it. And the SHIM program would only be on the server for me in that case. Actually, this is my first prototype to give him the idea, or say, hey, give this to the um, <laughs> programmers and see what you can do with this. And now it's not running the app. It, yeah, he's, this is running just in a normal browser, but all these links over here have have a triggering mechanism that tells the client to launch at an, at an event, and that's what you're what you're seeing out of every. But I like to go put www.ebay up there at the top. Of the oh, yeah, you can change and you get off of it, right? The, the thing you gotta avoid. But that would uh, drop. I mean, we would disconnect that once you left because we know that it's not mm -hmm. there anymore. What would the user be doing on their PC? I mean, does he like have the, the browser with the file probe there, and if they wanted to go their normal browser and see what the weather was, they would. Minimize this one. Yeah. Yeah. Those two instances of the browser going. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can do that. Well, you can use tabs, but as you said, you can. But once you say do that, that mode, doesn't that affect all execution? Of no, I set the shortcut to app mode. There's a shortcut. To yeah, yeah, his shortcut. You can't see it because he has the other things. <laughs> but um, that shortcut actually has the flags in order to say when you open up. Here's the URL. It's not Don't show the other stuff. Correct. Right. Cool. Will it really allow you to scan something in the blob? Scan something in a blob. You want to physically it's scan it in a document or a picture into a blob? Into the blob. No, I, that's. Probably not. A, we don't do that ourselves because the file would be too big after a while. It, it's better for in our situation, and we make a folder that's associated with the record, and then we put this data inside of that. And then you have pointers. And then we have pointers that trick that point to that particular record in the document. Now memos. Memos, we support them. I mean, you can type memos and you can cut and paste. That that was an issue we had just recently because everybody wanted, or some of them said, well, we need to cut and paste the text because it was turned to HTML when we did the browser. They were cutting the HTML and you can see it actually as HTML is formatted in the memo, but then it didn't work. It was shown across the characters, so we had to hold that for a future for that part, but it's now characters. So, so memos display and edit in? Yes, they, right yes. Now. Well, they do memos do that. Memo, memos work. No, no, I don't remember what he was talking about at that time. MySQL mirroring, we don't. Oh, do yeah, MySQL, they don't. No. Mirroring. Yeah, right. But they work in one. And this, is it used the GI admin or whatever that was? Is yes. So a user can, when they launch this, they'll get a certain file pro custom user menu, or does it only go to the main menu? Goes whatever menu you want. Goes to the menu you want it to. So theoretically, yeah. they can, you can limit the access to what they can oh, do. Yeah. yeah. It, what, it, what we have is each individual account has a CFG file, which he showed you when he showed you the administration. You have to choose one of those commands that says start CMD equals, and you tell the map the menu that you want to launch to start up. Now, at the present time, DOS is in quotes that you would tell, but Unix doesn't require those quotes. We're going we're looking into that because we just got called to our attention to see if we can make it the same for both. Yeah. But I can launch GI client and pass a username now, and not have to log into GI client. I can go straight in with pass parameters. Is there an equivalent of that when you're going into the web page so that I can bypass the login screen? Is there equivalent? I don't think so, is there? There's no way to bypass. There's the no way to bypass. All right, we may explore that. You know what I mean with the GI? Yeah. 
that we can launch that. You'd almost you'd have to have past parameters on the URL line or something uh, equivalent to that, maybe. And then you'd be passing a yeah. password. Yeah, yeah, clear 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 clear. yeah, you want to pass a password in the URL. Okay. I don't know. Have to pass a I don't know. We can think about it or discuss it, but I'm not making any promises. <laughs> wouldn't, you, wouldn't your browser just, if you had to set, remember URL username and password, wouldn't it just remember it? Please do not save passwords. <laughs> 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 Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> if you save a password for some reason, Chrome did not honor like clearing out passwords. You can look in, on YouTube or on, yeah. out online and Chrome, very ornery. They didn't honor the parameters of the HTML world. And so if you save that password, you'll find as you go through some fields that they might bring in your password into those fields and that's what you get through all those fields. So do not do that. Just, just, just disable that save feature when you're doing that. <laughs> There's not, we've tried to figure it out, but with the way we don't control the program in the browser, so we can't right now. <laughs> Patrick, do you see, now that you've got all this cool capability, creating a, you have a public front end that you wrote before this existed. Mm -hmm. You could feed that with SQL ODBC mirroring now, which would save the export import step. That's, that's a, a neat idea. Or you could do a more limited front end just for the public mm -hmm. with with this. Yeah. Um, th th leading up to a question that came up during the break, at some point in time, if the universe of people on the internet are hitting something here that we don't, they don't need to know it's File Pro behind the scenes. Yep. We, they don't maybe need to log in. That was why I was asking about passing the parameters. I might have a guest account kind of a thing. That's fine. We thank you for, for File Pro for those session counts. You would need to have some, <laughs> well, I, as I'm sure you know, what Microsoft did when they reached a certain threshold, they went to core licensing with SQL Server and departmental licensing with, with the servers. <coughs> if, if that, you may get to a point where there's an unlimited license thread or some way to deal with an indeterminate number of potential concurrent sessions um, that may require some discussion with the people also copyrighted on the bottom of the screen there. Um, that's that's uh, one individual, and I, sh I should take and mention, we much appreciate him a lot. He has spent a lot of work and energy in order to make this possible. I know we gave Logan a lot of praise and all that, and he you know rightfully deserves it. But without the other individual, Rich here. Walker, no, he did not make it here. But if he, without him, we probably wouldn't have the product as well. Well, if it's growing to the point that that becomes desirable and you really want to see the development side of this balloon, you know, obviously it wouldn't be cheap to have a site license or an unlimited license, but it might, it, you can't buy 10,000 licenses for a GI client. It's not, that wouldn't be practical. There's a discount <laughs> over 5,000, Tim. Huh? <laughs> er, Ernie said he's willing to sell you that. <laughs> my, my limit's been 160. <laughs> <laughs> like yes, sir. Do you have any mobile clients using your product? Like iPads or anything like that? Or? They, they use um, laptops. Laptops. Laptops, yeah, some are uh, using uh, Surface Pros. Okay, so you stayed away from the, the iOS completely. You should be able to run Windows or Apple computers. The reason why we can't is because that form generator okay. was uh, there is we're, Windows only. So we're, we, Engine Associates, has locked ourselves in. Gotcha. We're looking to the future of what we need to do, but that the product we're using right now runs only in Windows. And but we're looking to see if we can switch our third party to run differently because if I can run it on the client or on the server, I'm breaking that barrier. Right now I'm window only when it comes to the clients. Does screen resizing work the same way in web as it does in GI? You can you can scroll or pull the drag down the window and it resizes everything. Now that re resizing is a curse and a blessing, folks. <laughs> 
because we are locked in an 80 by 25, there has to be some rules that are kind of guidelines, I should say, that are established. If you go wide, you may not see, like you'd think, well, that's only supposed to have a space there. It might look like a big gap. And the reason why is in trying to get those in the line in the same spot that they are, in the line things, there has to be some kind of compromise. Because unlike GI, we keep those in scale racials. The web, I don't have, we don't have those in racials. But, but yeah, it'll go small. <laughs> Sometimes GI looks a little wonky when you start stretching it from standing. Like yeah, like I said, you know, you, you, we're going to have that because these are not, they're not, they're proportional fonts. <laughs> well, you're you're scaling the font. They're, they're right. fixed fonts, right? But they're no, they're not fixed fonts. I don't think they're not fixed. Are they, Alfred Logan? Uh, no, they're not fixed. Only in uh, text and, fields. And what's that? Only in text fields. Only in text fields are they fixed? And. That was really showed up immensely when you created or went to rechange the format of a browser. If you look at your old um, 3.0 right now, how if you were to change it, you did an update in the browser, all of a sudden it would like whop back and then it would expand open. He's now made those literally edit fields so that they stayed in line. But yeah, there's inherently some things that we had to just kind of make some guidelines decision, but for the most part, they still look good. Any other questions? If not, let's take a break. <laughs>